Hello boys and girls, Richard the Dick Coughlin here. I don't know why I do this to myself. Uh, there used to be a user on here who went by the name of Marmite Man 4. He was a young lad uh, who I, I tried a couple of years ago to have a sort of back and forth with. Basically, in this, he, he came to prominence when he was 14 and appeared in the Sun newspaper as being the young, well, a very young BMP supporter. He has uh, since left YouTube. He no longer makes videos, unfortunately, because YouTube has sort of like guidelines for what you can post. And his sort of anti-Negro Holocaust denial was sort of not welcome here. Well, he's got a blog. I was sent his blog, and I'm going to go and just read through. This probably will be several parts, this. But I just want to read through several bits of it for you. Because some of it frightens me, and others it just makes me fucking laugh. Okay, I'll read you his description. I am 18 years old. My name is Sean Allen, and I reside in the once proud nation of Great Britain. I'm a nationalist, not a patriot. Why do you hate this country, Sean? I tend to lead, not follow, and I aim to inspire others to do the same. The problem is, if we all lead, who are we going to follow? I am a strong opponent of liberalism and communism. To me, they're really the same thing, because they destroy and taint everything in which they come into contact with. He also claims that he used to do YouTube videos, but his channel is now dead as a plank of wood. Unfortunately, I went on to his channel, I typed in his, his blog, his channel name, and it's still up. I'm a big fan of the Greek Golden Dawn and the British National Party in my home country. I'm somewhat of a traditionalist. I don't agree with feminism, homosexuality, or transgender's rights. It makes me feel uneasy, at, uneasy, and the fact these things are preached in schools horrifies me. As if you've ever been to a fucking school, Sean. Unlike the majority of bloggers on the web, I am not a liberal, Marxist, communist, conformist. No, you're a renegade, aren't you? You're so original. I don't fall into the stereotype that all right-wingers are grumpy old white men. I'm only 18. <laughs> <coughs> You're a grumpy young white man. You are fucking breaking the mould there, Sean. The first blog he does is called I Can't Stand White People. Now, you might remember there was a thing called My Tram Experience a little while ago. It was a video of some crazed white woman racially abusing a load of people, like black people and immigrants on a train. And the video went viral and there's a big hoo-ha about it. A couple of weeks ago, there was a similar incident. Another video got released uh, and it was a black woman basically doing the same thing. It's saying things like, I can't stand white people. And uh, I thought it was refreshing. It showed that, you know, black people can integrate into British society. But Sean has a different take on this. He shows the video and he goes, now then, has this woman been arrested and taken away from her friends and family? No. Has the mainstream media followed the story like a bear follows honey? No. Nobody upstairs seemed to care. Why? Because it's not in their interest to show anti-white crimes. Okay. He's got a point. Then there's an update in the video. It appears the video has been noticed by the police and they're investigating. Feels good to know that we work together to bring this woman's racism into the spotlight. Then he links to an article in the Daily Mail. So all that shit you just wrote about... It's not in anyone's interest to investigate or show anti-white crimes. It is bollocks. You've just debunked your own fucking conspiracy. His next blog, Mitt Romney reminds white people of a better time. When I look at Mitt Romney making his speeches, I get a strange sense of nostalgia. I'm British, obviously. But like most of the post-90s world, I was brought up on American television, mu movies, music, and so on. I think you'll find most people in the post-50s world were brought up with that, Sean. You could say, at the age of 13, I knew more about America than I did my own country. I think I could still say that now. This is the direct consequence of Americanization. But something is changing. People no longer feel that connection anymore. No more America, fuck yeah. I like how he censored the word fuck. No more of that America, fuck yeah attitude which swept the 90s. What changed? America is still obviously very powerful, and urban American music is still growing popular in Europe and Asia, sadly. So what could it be? The reason is the slow death of white America. No, sorry, let me write this how he's written it. The reason is the, the slow death of white America is now clearly visible and no longer ignorable. Bingo! When Obama was elected in 2009, it ended an era of white dominance. He's still 50% white, Sean. Funded by the major banks and with the media on his side, Barack Hussein Obama was never going to lose against his opponent, 
spelt wrong, John McCain in 2008. Since Obama has been elected, suicide rates amongst whites have soared and depression is at an all-time high. Attacks on white people which come in the form of flash mobs are rising. Black Americans, empowered by their sense of achievement in electing Obama over McCain and what they see as defeating white America, are no longer holding back. Got any evidence? For no. They're on the offensive, kicking Whitey when he is down, so to speak. This is why the West rest of the world no longer respects America. Because when Bush was in charge, everyone loved America. I mean, people were like... And when Mitt Romney came over to Britain recently, he wooed us so graciously, didn't he? Europe is turning to Russia and China for inspiration. That's when you know you've hit... Ro what the fuck are you talking about, you insane git? So along comes a man named Mitt Romney. A Mormon with five children and a socially conservative outlook on life. He is wealthy, he is handsome, and generally, generally well-spoken. He is everything Obama is not. <laughs> yeah, Obama comes like, howdy everybody! I'm Barack Obama! <laughs> what do you mean handsome, Sean? You're a bit fruity, aren't you? Hmm. Got a thing for me? He's a bit of a handsome man, is he? Mm. He reminds white Americans of a bad time when they... Have you seen the polls, Sean? He reminds my white Americans of a better time when they ruled the roost and he makes the world pay attention again rather than look away in embarrassment. Is Mitt Romney the person America needs right now? Probably not. Who do I support then? Romney or Obama? I support Ron Paul. But I'll leave that for another day. As if Ron Paul didn't have enough fucking wackos following him. His next blog is about Anders Breivik. This one is simply terrifying. The leftist multicultural machine has used Anders Breivik's attacks on Utoya Island and Oslo last year as an opportunity to make all of us nationalists look batshit crazy. But they have failed. Anders Breivik was sentenced to 21 years in prison, 10 years minimum. He was also declared sane to the dismay of all leftists who are hoping to see him humiliated by being declared mentally ill. Actually, no. I wasn't. I wanted him to be declared sane, so he'd have to get sentenced. I can't argue with that sentence. If that's what Norway deems appropriate, then so be it. That's democracy. Deal with it, liberals. Yeah, you're such a democracy kind of guy, aren't you, Sean? This is the bit that's fucking terrifying. I believe Brevik is right about multiculturalism and what the potential dangers it has brought upon Europe. I do, however, think that Brevik went about it the wrong way. Okay. He killed socialist teenagers and gave our enemies ammunition to use against us for years. It's not that he killed people, full stop. It's the fact that he killed socialist teenagers. Should he have pretended to be a liberal and gone out and massacred a load of nutters like you to make us look bad? He also then goes on, he also sacrificed his own life because the chances are he'll never be let out into public again. What? He's going to live 21 years, I think. Right? For his own safety or for the safety of the public. Oh, poor bugger. Still, I don't know how history will judge Anders Bering Brevik, but I do know this. History is written by the victors. I said this the other day. People who say history is written by the winners are losers who don't understand how historians do their job. Oh, God. He then goes on to, to another article. Where's it? This is about, this is Chicago, multicultural paradise. He talks about this story that was in the news a little while ago, uh, where a guy in New York uh, was shot by NYPD. But he says there's a much bigger story. Yet last night, something much bigger happened in, Chica in Chicago and has barely been mentioned at all. 19 people were shot overnight in Chicago, many seriously wounded. Wait, am I missing something here? Why isn't this on the front pages? or on CNN, Fox News, and British TV. To prove that it's not been featured in the mainstream media, he links this story to a BBC article. Why would anyone getting shot in America necessarily make front page news over here? But all I did was, I did this little trick, Sean. I googled 19 people shot in Chicago. This is what I found. It's featured on the BBC, it was featured in the Chicago Tribune, it was featured on the Huffington Post, it was featured on the Daily Beast. It was featured on Fox News, it was featured on CBS News, it was featured on ABC, it was featured on the Atlantic Wire, it was sent out on multiple Twitter accounts, it was on the Daily Beast, USA Today, it was on New York Daily News, it was on the Washington Post, it was on the Daily Coast, it was on Raw Story, it was on MSNBC, 
It was on CNBC. It was featured on Yahoo News. It was featured on Google News. It was featured on every fuck Breitbart.com. It was everywhere, you fucking cunt. Did you even look up where the, this story was featured everywhere? Like, why the fuck are you? T- what the fuck are you talking about? Right? I think you already know why it wasn't featured on these new websites. I do anyway. The reason is the mainstream media isn't telling you about the shootings. It's because Chicago, in Chicago, is because it will embarrass Obama and his diversity-loving friends. Everyone in the shooting in Chicago, Sean, was black. The people who got shot, the people who did the shooting. That's not a multicultural fucking incident. It was on a mainstream media. You linked to a BBC article. How is that not mainstream media, you fucking delusional pillock? Obama is from Chicago. It's his stomping ground as a politician. Now look at Chicago and what is happening here. Would you want to see a whole country looking like that? That's why Obama and his liberal friends in the media cover it up. So you don't start asking questions about his precious multi It's not his, Sean. You know there were black people in America shooting each other before Obama was in power. In fact, Americans have got a great tradition of shooting each other. Of all colours, could this happen to the entire United States? No. Yes, it is happening. Unless the United States secure their borders and deport all illegals, then you... These weren't illegal immigrants! You're going to see the first world power slip into a new depression which it has never seen before. And it doesn't matter how much liberals try to dance around it, the issue is a racial one and always has been. You know it's people like you that are the problem, Sean. It's not just black and white. Most black and white people... Most people of most races get on with each other fine. It's cunts like you, on all the sides, who cause the problem. The the final blog I'm going to look at today, and believe me, I'm going to go through the rest of them, because he's written a doozy at the end of of his most recent one. 2009, this is about the British National Party. 2009 was a successful year for British nationalism. The 2009 European election seemed like a turning point. The BNP won two seats. One of the seats was won by BNP leader Nick Griffin. The left went crazy, demanding some sort of law which would prevent this happening. No, Sean. What was being discussed was a different way for people to vote. A different voting system. The BNP must reform in many ways. They must change their tactics concerning the media and use the internet as a tool of mass promotion more than any other UK party. How are they going to do that, Sean, when the mainstream media and the internet is run by all the Jews? Oh, that's right. The BNP must regain lost followers and former activists who left in 2010 following the human rights ruling ordering the BNP to accept non-white members. That's true. These people who left left to join the National Front and other fringe nationalist parties caused a lot of damage to an already wounded BNP. The BNP should quickly reclaim these supporters and convince them that the fractionalism within the British national movement isn't the way to go and they must unite under one party to have enough voters and activists to complete, compete against mainstream neo John, that's not a solution! You said you were going to give them solutions. That's stating a problem. That's like saying, well, all we have to do with homelessness is find all the homeless people somewhere to live. That's not a solution. The BNP should go on one-to-one interviews and more sensible TV options, such as NewsHour and the Daily Politics Show, usually uh, which target elderly viewers. The problem is, no one wants Nick Griffin on their show, because he can't. Finally, on the media, the BNP could could, could have been, could have been, could have been, Sean, learn the language, could have been their own media machine if they capitalized on the internet and on social media sites such as YouTube where they've already got a YouTube channel, Twitter, where they've already got a Twitter account, and Facebook, where they've already got a Facebook account. Brilliant, Sean. So your solution is, A, to do something about a problem, but not really specify what it is, uh, to go on interviews that no one will fucking invite them on, and to use social media outlets, which they have been doing since 2008. You are the Karl Rove of nationalism. For the sake of my viewers, I will raise, I will force my blood pressure through the roof just for your fucking entertainment, and I'll do the rest of his blogs later on in the week. Richard the Dick Coughlin, good night, may God be less.